Blurring the backgrounds of your photos doesn't need to be a long and complicated process, and I wanna show you how to do it super easily here in Lightroom. Hello friend, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com and this is the photo we'll be working with today. Here within the develop module, we're gonna add a couple of selective adjustments to the background to quickly add a background blur without the complicated steps that you might think are required in this process. So the first thing that we'll do is go to our masking icon. Then we'll go to the background selection and that will create a new mask around the entire background. Now, if I zoom in, you can see that a couple areas are not being selected and that's okay. We'll go and touch that up afterwards. For now, we're just going to set the canvas for our background blur, if you will. Now, when you think about a actual background blur from a photo taken with a wide aperture, it gradually transitions from in focus to out of focus. So if you just add a single mask for the entire blur, it's not gonna work very well. So instead, to add a more realistic look, we can add a linear gradient at the bottom so that the blur transitions into more intensity as the photo goes further into the background. That sounds a little bit complicated, but it's actually really easy. With that mask selected, just go to subtract and then go down to linear gradient. Now we're creating a linear gradient that's going to subtract from our background mask. As you can see here, as I continue to drag the gradient, that red area becomes less and less visible. So wherever the red area is either not visible or slightly visible, that's where the effect or our blur effect is gonna gradually transition away. So I'm going to place this somewhere like this. So we have most of our foreground that will not be affected by our blur adjustment. Now with our mask complete, it's time to add our blur effects with two sliders. The first thing that we'll do is go to our clarity slider and just go and drag that down. I'll zoom in a little so you can see exactly what's going on in the background. As I drag down the clarity, it just softens some of the detail. So if you just use the clarity slider, you can get sort of a subtle background blur with this method. Now, if you want to take this one step further and have the background blur a little bit more dramatic, we're gonna to go to the detail section and click on the sharpness slider and now bring this down. And this is where the blur actually becomes quite intense. If I zoom in here, you can see how a lot of the buildings are a lot more blurred than before. Just moving the sharpness slider up and down, you can see that big difference that that one slider creates. So after you mess around with some of those adjustments and you are happy with the amount of blur that you have, it's now time to go back and refine your mask. Because in my case, you can see there's parts of this building back here that are not fully blurred like the other areas and there's some parts between her arms and things that are not blurred as well. So we need to go and add to our mask with a brush. To do that we'll once again make sure that we're using the same mask as before and go to add and then brush. Now with auto mask enabled here that means that Lightroom will do a good job to stick within the edges that you're painting essentially, we're going to just go and paint over the areas that we want to apply this blur to. So I'll continue to paint around all these areas around the subject here as well. And depending on how well the background selection process was, you'll have more or less work during this stage. Now, if you notice that there are like little pixely blocky looking things in the background, just disable auto mask and then that will help fix those up because Lightroom is essentially just selecting extra little things that it thinks is an edge. We don't want that, so I'll just disable it for the background. And then I'll re-enable it in a moment when I go and paint around her arms. Now I'm gonna go by her arms, and since I have this clear edge, I'm going to now enable auto mask. And so that way I don't have to worry about accidentally going over the edge and blurring the parts of my subject here. So instead I can just focus right on the background if you make a mistake, just press Command or Control Z to undo that, no problem. So now with all of my masking adjustments complete, I had to go through a few areas there just to touch it up with the brush. I have now successfully added that background blur. And now there's a couple ways that we can adjust this once you're completed the process to refine it as needed. So for example, let's say that I'm not happy with the amount of blur. I can always just go back to my sliders here. I can adjust the sharpness or the clarity to get a slightly different looking background blur. Now, if you're not happy with the perspective of the blur, the depth of field of that blur, all we have to do is adjust the linear gradient. So I'll just bring down the clarity and sharpness once again, so this is a little more obvious, and I'll click on my linear gradient. Now I could just click and drag this wherever I want, and I'll zoom in so you can see this a little better. But if I move this up a little further, you can see how it starts to remove some of the blur in more areas of my background. But then as I bring this further down, it starts to add more blur to those areas. You can then soften this out just by extending the size of this gradient like so. 
This way you have total customization over your blur effect and you can create that fake depth of field all within Lightroom. You don't have to go into Photoshop at all. So as you can see, adding a background blur in Lightroom is actually pretty straightforward. However, there are some limitations with getting like perfect selections around hair and things like that. And in that case, if you have a really specific edge or a detailed edge that you need to add a background blur around, then I recommend that you use Photoshop for this process instead. I share how to do that in a step-by-step -step guide right here. So you can just click this video and I'll walk you through the entire process of adding a background blur, but this time in Photoshop.